our golfers, our clubs, our counties, the beating heart of England golf. Together, they inspire, engage and drive a positive perception of our wonderful game. They provide the pathway for women and girls to reach their highest potential. They promote diversity and inclusion to create opportunities for all. They encourage participation and development at all levels of the game. They fly the flag of St George with pride on a world stage. They build a sustainable sport to ensure golf will always have a bright future. And now the time has come to celebrate all that is great about golf in this country. To thank our volunteers, our ambassadors, our venues, our unsung heroes. To honor those who've used golf to create, innovate and inspire. To acknowledge outstanding performances and contributions that will last a lifetime. So please join us as we get ready for the England Golf Awards 2022. Good evening and a very warm welcome to you all. We are at the England Golf Awards 2022, brought to you in partnership with our headline sponsors, Adidas Golf. Now, after the success of last year's online England Golf Awards, we are pleased to once again welcome you to all of you to this virtual ceremony. We've just seen on that fabulous introductory video, there's been plenty of activity around our clubs and counties, featuring golfers of all age ranges and abilities over the past year. Our nominees and audience, well, you may not be with us in person, but I know that you are all here in spirit and on screen. Provided, provided that the UK's Wi-Fi network stays strong for the next few hours, I will be keeping my fingers crossed. Well, while it's working now, shall we get all our finalists, everyone who's gathered to watch, to give us a wave and maybe even a holler as well. Hello, good evening. Oh, you all look fantastic. Brilliant. And I'm loving all the decorations and the bunting and the balloons and everything. It's fabulous. And while we are celebrating all that's good about golf in England this evening, we're also extremely mindful of events elsewhere in Europe. <clears throat> Our thoughts and prayers are with our friends at the Ukrainian Golf Federation and all Ukrainians who continue to suffer because of Russian aggression. And to them we send a very clear message. England Golf stands together with you and we look forward to the day when Ukraine is once again free from the ravages of war. To kickstart tonight, we have a special message from a newbie to golf and one of the amazing women who were part of the Slingsby Golf Academy this year. Hi and good evening to all the finalists at the England Golf Awards tonight. I hope you're having a fantastic time and I'm really looking forward to becoming a part of the golf community. Our thanks to Zara Phillips. Now, even though you can't be with us in this room, we really want to hear from you throughout the course of the ceremony. And we'd love to get your reaction to our nominees and our winners. So let's hear from well-wishers throughout England and maybe further afield. Share with us your reactions on a night when we celebrate all that is good about this game, the game we love. So just use the hashtag EGAwards2022 and keep talking. So without further ado, let's get this party started. Our first award of the night shines the spotlight on four amazing young people who are the finalists for the Young Ambassador of the Year. And tonight's Young Ambassador of the Year award is presented in association with the Golf Foundation. Since 1951, our colleagues at the Golf Foundation have used the power of golf to change the lives of young people by introducing them to the game at a grassroots level. Through a wide range of initiatives at clubs and in schools, the Golf Foundation inspires participation and creates golfers. Let's hear your support for our finalists. Let's hear you roar. Isabella Brunskill, Enfield Golf Club. Izzy helped publicise her club by writing a column for women in golf during her year as junior captain and did sterling work to change and modernise the club. Eloise Feely from Northamptonshire County Club, a prolific fundraiser with an infectious personality. Eloise captained the junior section and helped integrate the younger members into wider club activities. 
and Tilly Garfoot, Spalding and Woodall Spa, a girls golf rocks ambassador and member of the Golf Foundation's Girls Leadership Programme, helped shape the future for girls golf in Lincolnshire with her ideas and energy. And Kai Williams, Bedford and County Golf Club. Kai is a passionate about encouraging other young black members of the community to give golf a go and in 2021 used his platform as a young ambassador to champion diversity in the game. Look, congratulations to you all for being nominated. What you're doing is so impressive and thank you. Judges commented on what a difficult decision this was. There are so many outstanding young people giving their heart and soul to the development of golf for others. The judges were overwhelmed and inspired by the social issues that young people have been tackling through the game of golf. Judges said the winner epitomizes a young, passionate golfer. They play an important and proactive role in changing the face of golf for young players and those from diverse backgrounds. Let's put our hands together for our first winner of the evening, Young Ambassador of the Year, sponsored by the Golf Foundation. It's Kai Williams. Kai, congratulations. Hey! Kai, I can see you with, is that all the family there with you, behind you? Uh, yeah, that's everyone I've got with me here. <laughs> excellent, excellent. Look, congratulations. I'm sure there'll be some good celebrations this evening. Do me the privilege, yeah, okay. please, of talking me through some of the work you've been doing this year and how, how it, uh, being an England golf ambassador, a young ambassador, has helped you. Oh, it's helped me in so many ways, so many I can't even like mention. I've had so many opportunities. I've been to events like the BMW Championship, the Open, to like introduce the next generation of young golfers, which was really amazing. I've done talks to CEOs of the Golf Foundation, talking about diversity in golf to them and how much it means to me. Uh, I've even been on like platforms like Sky Sports to talk about diversity in golf, which is just beyond what I can even imagine if it anything that what I thought was going to happen when I started being a young ambassador. And it's just opened up so many doors for me that I am so thankful for and just glad that I can reach out to so many people in that way. It's been absolutely brilliant what you've been doing. And I know this year you instigated a takeover of the in England Golf Instagram account for the England Amateur yeah. Championships. How important is it that the message that golf is a game for all is spread through social media. Uh, I think social media has played such a huge part in society and like the world, especially young people, um, especially during like COVID times. I think it's really important that you said it earlier, we all love golf. And I think it's really important that everyone has the chance to love the sport as much as I do and everyone on this call does. And I think that social media is a great way of getting that message out there to as many people in as quick amount of time. And I'm so thankful that I got to spread the word of diversity and like what we do as young ambassadors on that huge platform of England Golf. And it's just, again, beyond what I can believe. Well, Carl, I've got to ask you because I'm getting the hint that you're pretty media savvy. So do I need to worry about my job or do the pros? <laughs> 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 don't worry now, I don't think I'll be coming out to go anytime soon. We'll see. We shall see. Listen, you're doing brilliantly, Kai. Thank you so much. And look, to all the others as well, well done. What you're doing is brilliant for the game and so deserved of like nomination and recognition. So thank you very much. Ladies and gentlemen, let me present the Young Ambassador of the Year. That is Kai Williams. <laughs> Fabulous. Now, <clears throat> it's always a keenly contested category, and it is now time to announce England Golf's County of the Year, sponsored by Your Golf Travel. And this year, three judges made it on, three finalists made it onto our judges' shortlist. Cambridge Area Golf Union, one of England's smallest counties, proved that it can punch above its weight. All 20 affiliated clubs bought into junior training plans, allowing young golfers to compete locally and nationally. Kent ensured all 82 clubs and two golf facilities were safe golf accredited, as well as launching two successful junior disability academies. And Middlesex did great work to assist clubs with marketing tools, as well as running 31 tournaments, allowing 1,542 players to experience the thrill of competition. Now, judges said the winner demonstrated exceptional performance in all categories, predominated by leading on safeguarding and inclusion, 
alongside fantastic goal for communication and connectivity success. It gives me great pleasure to announce that the winner and England's Golf's County of the Year, as sponsored by Your Golf Travel, is Kent. Hey, look at the cheers go up and lovely to see others clapping as well. Well done, I see the poppers going up as well. Many congratulations, Kent. Um, I mentioned, who have we got here? Who's going to be speaking for Kent today? Unmute yourselves and speak to us. I am, as Peter I'm chair of Kent Golf. Congratulations to you and your team. Um, I mentioned earlier about the county's launch of two junior disability academies. Perhaps you can tell me a little bit more about these and what they've meant to the disabled golfers in the county. Uh, well, we have a, a Kim Popper from Wilderness Golf Club in Kent um, was the top of the disability golf disability um, rankings in the world. We've used him um, to launch our disability academies and involved as many people as we can in that. And again, the juniors involved and in giving them a chance uh, to experience the golf that we all enjoy is a great bonus. Sounds fabulous. And you did some really good work in 2021. You can't stop there. So what's happening in 2022 and beyond? Further, we're doing further um, launches of junior academies. We're uh, taking our women in golf program forward. Uh, we're trying to reinvest in the clubs because uh, we've, we've issued grants to try and get them to develop their golf as well. So it's all going back into grassroots golf as well as we can. It just sounds brilliant. How are you celebrating later? I imagine that we all will be. <laughs> <laughs> Very discreet. Well done. Look, congratulations. And before you, go, before you go, our category sponsor, Your Golf Travels, digital content creator, Rory, who's often out on the road, scoping out all the courses all over the world. Well, Rory travelled to Kent a few weeks ago, playing at Prince's Golf Club and talking about all the great work you've done. Take a look. <laughs> Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. I'm Rory from Your Golf Travel, proud sponsors of this year's England Golf Awards. I'm at Prince's Golf Club in Kent, who have won the County of the Year Award for the England Golf Awards 2022. So congratulations, Kent, first and foremost. Obviously, at Your Golf Travel, Kent is one of our most popular destinations with amazing former Open Championship courses like Prince's Golf Club. We've got Royal St George's literally on the other side of that fence and Royal Sinkport's another former Open Championship host just five or ten minutes down the road. Of course, Prince's Royal Sinkport's and Royal St George's are kind of the flagship courses down here in Kent, but there are plenty of others. Oh, I ripped that one. You've also got the likes of Little Stone Golf Club, uh, kind of a hidden gem in these parts to people who haven't been down here before. You've got the London Club, which is home to 36 holes of awesome stadium style golf and a Jack Nicklaus design golf course as well. And places like Chart Hills and many, many others. So it's fair to say that Ken, as far as golf courses go, has plenty of quantity and quality on offer. But of course, Golf courses aren't the only reason why Kent has won County of the Year. And here are some of the other things that make them such deserving winners of this award. Kent Golf stays in touch with golfers in their community and engage with them with monthly newsletters and daily communications on social media platforms, making sure golfers are up to speed with what's going on in the Garden of England. They've also demonstrated a concerted effort to make golf more inclusive across the county, focusing on junior golf initiatives, disability access programmes and getting more women into the game of golf. Kent has become a safe golf accredited county, a signatory to the WIG Charter, have mixed gender boards and committees and have strived to assist where possible with the crossover to the World Golf Handicap System in order to make the transition as seamless as possible for its golfers. Golf is moving in the right direction and Kent Golf have demonstrated that they are very much part of that progression. So I'd just like to finish the video really by saying congratulations once again to Kent. County of the Year, England Golf Awards 2022. Thoroughly deserved winners and here is to another successful year next year. That is quite far short. Can I finish this for a par? Yes, just about.
Right, that's enough for me. I'll leave you ladies and gentlemen to the rest of your evening while I carry on my round at just one of the courses which make Kent such a special place for golf. And I must say, I'm very pleased I wasn't part of any of the judging, but the first golf club I was a member of was in Kent. It is still in Kent, obviously. Nizel's, which was fantastic and was so warm and welcoming that I always have fond memories and go back as often as I can. So I will be travelling around. Thank you, Rory, for showing us and just reminding us how great Kent courses are. Um, congratulations, Kent, County of the Year. Now, we still have lots more categories to go through and more winners to announce. So... Don't be backwards, so coming forward, tell us who you want to win, who you hope will win by tagging us on your social posts. Use the hashtag EGAwards2022. Now, our next award is for the Sustainability Project of the Year, which was first introduced to the awards last year. The Sustainability Project of the Year aims to recognise and celebrate a project which has carried clear objectives and set targets on how to sustain golf in one of a number of different areas. This could be through investing in human resources or developing a new and sustainable economic approach. It may have involved preserving the environment or ecology associated with a golf facility or by realising the untapped potential of a social project. Our finalists are all fascinating in their own way. They've all demonstrated brilliant and innovative ideas to get our judges thinking. Beacon Park Golf Club's dedicated 12 members kept the club alive as part of the course was used for landfill. And now investment in equipment and green staff has members returning. Things are looking positive. Drax Golf Club's tree regeneration programme had members donating their used Christmas trees to be replanted alongside more than 200 other new trees and bushes. Edgebaston Golf Club's project to increase wildlife diversity helped the club achieve GEO certification. Now, this included the installation of three beehives and the creation of the club's award-winning honey. And Farley Golf Club's aptly named Operation Pollinator program helped bring in more than half an acre of new wildflower areas to the course. Now, at a time when looking after our natural environment and building a bright future for the game of golf is of paramount importance to the industry, the judges felt that one of the nominees demonstrated real awareness in this area and showed vision when embracing the challenges of sustainable progress. The winner of this year's Sustainability Project of the Year is Farley Golf Club. Congratulations, congratulations. Who have we got here? We've got myself, James, the general manager, and Kenny McPhail, the course manager. Welcome to you both, congratulations. Um, tell us a bit more about why sustainability is just so important to the club. It's all on you, Kenny. <laughs> Well, we're, we're guardians of a, a parcel of land. I think we have a responsibility to um, be as sustainable and uh, environmentally um, positive as, as, as possible, really. And it's quite a difficult decision to make, I think, when there are economic pressures as well. Um, how did you balance that and how did members react? Um, yeah, the members reacted really well, actually, um, as, as long as uh, it was a very visual um visual parcel of land and stuff like that we, we create in this area and um, it's really kind of enhanced these areas as well as visually as and um, environmentally. And I know I there think, are some plans to expand on the work you've already done in the area. What are those plans in the future? Yeah, we've already uh, created another half a hectare uh, this year. Um, so as you come in our drive, there's a, uh, there's a massive parcel of land there that we have uh, done the same kind of thing to. Excellent. Yeah. Now, um, James, just in case you're too distracted there, um, who's going to celebrate with you? Or is all the bubbly just for you two tonight? I think it's just going to be for me and Kenny, to be yeah. fair. Um, we, we know how to have a, have a little party, so I'm sure we'll be, we'll be fine, just the two of us. <laughs> <laughs> Fabulous. Well, you enjoy yourself. No party is too small. Remember that. It sounds as if this sustainable approach is paying dividends. Once again, well done again to Farley Golf Club. Thank you. Now it's time to honour the volunteers who are the heartbeat of clubs all over England. Without the willing volunteers giving up precious time and putting others first, club and amateur golf in this country just wouldn't survive. 
There are more than 50,000 unsung heroes up and down the country who help organise club competitions, they raise funds, they plan social events, or they assist in the development of juniors. The list is endless, their efforts are outstanding. If you have a good band of volunteers at your club, then there's an excellent chance that your club will be a success. Now, it's always a pleasure to recognise the work of the Volunteer of the Year. And these four finalists, you know them. Everyone knows people like this. They don't seek publicity. They're happier kind of working away in the background. Tonight, though, we think they deserve to take centre stage. So let's put them up there. Here they are. Sandy Burrell persisted in his vision to transform the club from an 18-hole venue into a 27-hole family-friendly facility with a young and vibrant membership. A stalwart of the club for more than 29 years, the last 16 have been spent as course director. James Dobson began with a base of 10 juniors seven years ago. Since then, he developed the junior section to reach 100 members, 30 of them girls. Alan Plum is the go-to man for everything, from divoting to the academy programme. And Alan helps with the club's schools programme, as well as with age concern, facilitating play for older golfers. And Christine Rickson, a key member of the Women in Golf team, who acts as a buddy, a mentor and a friend to any female taking up the game. Her friendly presence and hard work have seen participation numbers amongst women rise by 62% in just a year. I think they all deserve a huge round of applause. So let's give them that, shall we, from everyone. Now, judges said the winner has been instrumental in many core areas within their club, putting in place a fantastic pathway to progress new golfers into members, whilst also being on the board, negotiating leases, supporting the Women and Girls Charter, helping with safe golf. Pretty impressive work. And as with all the categories, it has been extremely difficult to pick a winner. But the judges have decided that the 2022 Volunteer of the Year is Alan Plum. Alan, congratulations to you. Alan, a big smile on your face and I can see the bar, um, those behind the bar, oh and a buddy as well, also happy for you, congratulations. Um, tell me a little bit about why you have been involved, why you have decided to make a difference. Well, I mean it started a few years ago, I think that, uh, I think when I left work you realise you've got transferable skills, so I started off with um, coaching, helping our fantastic junior organiser uh, with some of her programmes, um, summer golf camps uh, for our juniors. Um, then I was organising a coaching programme for uh, adult beginners uh, and um, that sort of morphed into our academy which we started uh, five years ago for our adults and we now have about 50 members. Uh, and, uh, you know, you get involved in all sorts of things, basically. Why do you the think, I mean, you've worked with schools, um, your age concern, yeah. you're helping people at both ends of the age spectrum. I suppose this shows that golf is a game for all ages. And does this just not prove that? Absolutely. It's a bit like one of those board games. It's, you know, for everybody from eight to 80 or what have you. So, um, yeah, so with our juniors, we start, um, you know, probably about five or six. And uh, with age concern, I, they probably have somebody of my age actually to make them feel comfortable. <laughs> but, um, but yes, so we, you know, we are working with all age groups and, uh, you know, it's fantastic to see um, adult beginners uh, develop. Um, you know, I think that's probably the most rewarding thing of all. Um, and I've got uh, two yeah. very quick questions for you. Um, how do you bribe people to um, div at parties? Because that's always the thing. Uh, we are divoting is something that I, I have a particular uh, thing for actually tea. So you often find me out uh, out doing sort of uh, divoting on on teas. Uh, we sometimes have fairway divoting parties, but uh, uh, that's just a little sideline, I think. And the last question for you: Where do you get your energy from? Uh, well, I get a lot of support at home, and it does get me. 
this does get me out of a lot of decorating, I have to say. Oh, OK. So maybe the award is a good and a bad thing. Look, I think you can get some energy. See behind you, over your left shoulder, there is someone waiting behind that bar, and I think they're waiting to get you a drink. And just to congratulate you. Fantastic. To celebrate. Thank so you. Just enjoy that, Alan. Congratulations. And congratulations, congratulations to you all for being nominated. Congratulations to all the other volunteers. Yeah, they do fantastic work. There's a new award this evening for diversity and inclusion. Now, this new award category aims to recognize the work that's been done to attract players from underrepresented sections of the community into the game. We have four very worthy finalists. Black British Golfers has created an engaging and inclusive social platform showing black golfers and allies of all ages and abilities playing and enjoying the game. Hannah Crump from Stonebridge Golf Club did great work with the Muslim Golf Association to deliver its first taster day, as well as working with the Girls and Golf Society to promote the game to LGBTIQ plus women. Terry Kirby from Ganstead Park Golf Club became the first handy golfer to become captain of a golf club in 2021. And Terry's volunteered as chairman of the Handy Golfers Foundation and led on organizing events featuring a mix of wheelchair, disabled and able-bodied golfers. Ellie Perks from Hadley Wood Golf Club underwent major spinal surgery in 2021 but continued to promote disability golf by running disability coaching sessions, organising disability golf days and even taking over the England Golf Instagram channel during the England Open for golfers with a disability. Now judges said that the winner had demonstrated a hugely positive influence at international, national, local and personal levels. Their lifelong dedication, influence and passion to give disabled golfers a brighter future stood out. The winner is Terry Kirby from Ganstead Park Golf Club. Congratulations, Terry. Hey, well timed <laughs> popper there as well. Terry, you and the other finalists. I mean, I can't imagine how difficult this category was to judge. You've all been doing some amazing work in this field. And again, diversity, inclusion and inclusion at the top of the list. Why is this important to you? Um, as it's been over the last couple of years, it's been very, very difficult to um, get out there to, to showcase what disabled golfers can actually do. Um, I'm, I'm sorry, I'm a bit stunned. I didn't expect you're, to win al that you're allowed to be stunned, but you deserve <laughs> this. Trust me, the judges deliberated and they honestly are delighted that you've won. Carry on, please. So um, I've, I've been. Uh, playing disabled golf for, for 28 years and in all that time we've been pushing and pushing to try and get um, wheelchair golfers, um, any golfers that with a disability showcased. That's why the, um, like the diversity and inclusion going out onto the courses and supplying a disabled golfer and then making a four ball up with club golfers and other golfers, so they can see that just because somebody has a disability doesn't mean they can't play golf. And they actually are quite stunned at how good disabled golfers are. We still have trouble at the moment with the, the wheelchair golfers is that um, actually being accepted, taking the buggies onto the onto the, the greens because it's like, oh, you can't, you can't do that. Of course. Well, you know, yeah. and I said, well, you know, I mean, you've got a ton and a half of lawnmower on, and even after Christmas, I'm not a ton and a half going on the greens. No, you're looking great. You're looking great, shape, Terry. Um, obviously, you're not a ton and a half. Um, <laughs> you are club captain, and that means you're the first handy golfer to become a club captain. That must mean an awful lot to you. Yeah, um, that that was. Um, three years ago when I was at, at Tapton Park. It was an amazing honour to um, be the first wheelchair, but I'm not, I'm not the first disabled golfer to actually be um, a club captain, but to be the first wheelchair golfer, it, it was a great honour and um, it was so good to, to be a positive role model for, for other, other wheelchair golfers. I mean, everybody knows somebody that is in a wheelchair or knows somebody else that knows somebody that's in a wheelchair. So if they can see some, myself, 
or anybody going out and playing golf and thinking, wow, oh, Harry could go do that. Let, let's get him on the course and let's get him doing doing a bit of work for a change, you know. You know, you, you don't have to stay at home. Let's just get out there. Too right, it's too right. Brilliant. Now, Terry, you're the only one this evening, I think, I'm going to say you cannot celebrate too much tonight, I'm afraid. No. Sorry, you are leaving tomorrow for the Pas de Calais. Alcohol oh, yeah, OK, <laughs> just the one. Um, you're leaving tomorrow for the Pas de Calais uh, Handicap, Handy Golf Open. So I'll say good luck. Don't mess with the head tonight. No, not too many no. drinks. OK, no. play well. I'm rooting for you. Take care. Congratulations you again. Bye. Bye-bye. <laughs> Fabulous. Now, we move on to a hotly contested category, the Participation and Development Coach of the Year. The four finalists are Aaron Cox from Blackwell Grange Golf Club. Aaron created a six-hole junior course which allowed him to step up his work with local schools. In his time at the club, the junior section has grown from 12, grown or times it by 10, to 120. Adam Chamberlain from Peterborough Milton Golf Club. Lessons involving local school kids, brownies, beavers as well, and guides, as well as a disability group called Little Miracles, has created fresh opportunities for juniors. Beth Scott from Old Ford Manor Golf Club delivered coaching sessions for key workers and medically vulnerable children during 2021 and is working with three foster families to offer golf to children from unsettled backgrounds. And Kevin Capelhorn from Leon the Solent Golf Club is coach for the county under 14 and under 16 teams. He's also combined golf lessons to his school groups with education on their environment. Now, judges said the winner must be commended for transforming the junior section of their club. The holistic approach gave an inspiring pathway for new golfers to learn the game and integrate fully into club membership. Congratulations to you all for being nominated. There is just one winner, and that winner of the 2022 Participation and Development Coach of the Year is Aaron Cox from Blackwell Grange Golf Club. Congratulations, Aaron. Oh, I can see the cheering. Fabulous. And you've got a whole cohort of support behind you. Excellent. Oh, don't quieten them down. Come on, keep cheering. Even Sorry. louder. <laughs> Sorry, Naga. Sorry, Naga. It's perfect. It's absolutely perfect. Aaron, firstly, that. congratulations. Well done. You look absolutely you. delighted, as you should be. Now, you increased the junior section of your club by more than 1,000%. That is some achievement. How did you do it? Well, Naga, it was pretty much just getting off the, the couch and actually going out and finding kids. I went to primary schools. Uh, I went on the phone, emails. I went to their schools, into the reception, put a face to a name, and, uh, and, and really just wanted to get lots of kids to play golf and come try. Uh, at Blackwell Grange, we have the facilities. So uh, it was up to me then to try and retain them and but to create a product that the the kids and the parents would believe, but also see the kids actually getting better. And um, and obviously having able, being able to then create the six hole course, which obviously the club were fantastic to allow me to do, but I created the uh, order of merit uh, season for the kids from age five all up to about 11 playing 12 hole competitions on their own little course and playing for a green jacket and, and claret jugs and all the trophies so it was it was lots of work but it was it was it's not a job for me it's, it's what I do so I love doing it oh it sounds like you absolutely adore it it sounds like so much fun and so rewarding as well but obviously you put the effort in you know um when it comes to golf with young people, one of the things I always admire is the temperament of young golfers, particularly as I'm not always known for having the best myself. But I'm, I'm working <laughs> on it. I'm working on it. It really does. Sounds I like. think golf really does help with personal development in young people, doesn't it? It gives them confidence, you know, to just chat, to just know how to be amongst different people. Oh, absolutely. It's the confidence to actually talk to their peers, but then talk to adults, talk to adult members, but also it's, it's about the discipline nugger. Um, if, if the kids follow a process as, as I've taught them over the last three years, uh, it, it's, they get into their own process, they believe that process and they trust it and they get confidence doing that, then they follow that discipline by playing golf. But then they, as you said, the confidence just goes into not only golf, but away from the golf course, classroom, at home, amongst other kids, 
uh, and then it's just, you know, it's, it's fun for them. It, you, you have to make it fun from it at the end of the day. So uh, now you've got this award on a scale of one to 10, how would you rate yourself as a coach? Uh, oh, 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 I'm, oh, I'd probably stay at 10. <laughs> what are they shouting? <laughs> They're all shouting out 10, but uh, I mean, obviously, look, I'm, I've only been in the country a, a few years, but I've been, I've, I've, I have been a golf pro and teaching pro for the last 15 years. So, um, I mean, I've got no scale. I just want to make I've myself better every One's year. But also, you, know I never, you know I never let a question go unanswered. <laughs> well, yeah, but just to, it's just to give more and more to these kids that stuff that I didn't get as a kid, but just pass on my knowledge and enthusiasm and, and literally love for the game of golf. Yeah, I still haven't heard a number. Oh, I'd give myself 10. There you go. It wasn't that hard, was it? Everyone in the room agrees with you. Um, listen, perhaps you are a 10, but we have a message from another well-respected coach who appreciates the time and dedication required to achieve what you have, and perhaps they would also be given by the wider crowd a 10 too. This is just for you. Hello, Aaron. I want to congratulate you on becoming Coach of the Year for the incredible work that you have done at Blackhall Grange Golf Club. I hear you have hugely increased the junior membership there and I know enough about sport to know the importance of creating an environment in which kids can thrive and that is always down to people like you. So big, big congratulations from me, Aaron Cox, Coach of the Year, Blackhall Grange, keep it up. I saw Aaron's face as um, Judy popped up there, Judy Murray popped up, and he was absolutely delighted. I should say, actually, Judy Murray and Zara Phillips are part of the Slingsby Golf Academy cadets this year. So keep an eye out online, because you can follow how they're getting on learning to play golf. Now, even in a year which began with another national lockdown, the standard produced throughout the season by England's elite amateur golfers was quite outstanding. And next up is the Performance of the Year Award. England has a proud tradition of producing some amazing results at amateur level on both national and international stages. The honours kept coming in 2021 for individuals who followed the England golf performance pathway from a young age, as well as England teams. Now, England golf's performance team, led by performance director and Team GB golf leader Nigel Edwards, have shortlisted four excellent candidates for tonight's next award. Finalists are England women's team, which struck gold at Royal County Down in July 2021, winning the European Ladies Team Championships. Rosie B. Kim from Buckinghamshire Golf Club had a stunning year, including wins at the English Girls Under 14 Championship and at the R&A Girls Under 16 Championship. Kayleigh McGinty from Knoll Golf Club enjoyed a fabulous season, winning five times on the US college circuit, earning her place in the GBNI Curtis Cup team and playing a starring role in England's victory at both the European Ladies Team Championships and Home International Series. Harley Smith from Raleigh Golf Club became just the second player in history, the first being Justin Rose in 1995, to win both the McGregor Trophy and Karis Trophy in the same year. This is obviously an extremely tight category, and it was possible to make a strong case for each nominee to be named as a winner. I think that's the diplomatic way of saying that the judges came to blows. Anyway, when it came to the final call though, the judges decided that a combination of individual brilliance and fantastic teamwork as displayed during one week in July last year tipped the balance in favor of one of the candidates. Against the odds, a new group of players came together to play out of their skins to strike gold for England and be crowned European champions. Tonight's winner is the England women's team. Congratulations to them. Fabulous. I'm so delighted. Obviously can't get the whole team together, but would like to welcome team members Annabelle Fuller and Kaylee, Kaylee McGinty. Congratulations, both of you. I can see the smiles on your faces, so congratulations. I'm so chuffed to bits for you. We are going to chat, but couldn't have this go by without bringing you a message from a rather recognisable face, England Golf Ambassador Tommy Fleetwood.
Hey everyone, just want to say a huge congratulations to the England women's team for winning the European Team Championships and the performance of the year. Um, congratulations guys, amazing, amazing week, amazing achievement, um, such an amazing feeling and uh, you've all done great. We're all watching, we're all very proud of you and congratulations and keep it up. Have a great night. Just brilliant and Tommy's words I'm sure echoed throughout the country. Annabelle, shall we start with you? Um, fantastic achievement to be crowned European champion. Some really tough battles along that journey. And there was the semi-final against Scotland, which really could have gone either way. What clinched it? Unmute yourself. There we go. Yeah, I got it. Thank you. Um, I think, honestly, we were all rooting for each other, and I think that makes a big difference. Kind of like seeing each other in the fairway, kind of like obviously you see each other across fairways and kind of we were battling together as opposed to kind of just playing the individual match and I remember in one of the matches Kaylee actually came and caddied for me um, so like little things like that makes a big difference because you're not playing just for yourself you're playing for the whole team. Absolutely and um, was Kaylee a good caddy? I know your your result was good but was Kaylee a good caddy? She's not listening honestly she, she doesn't know what you're saying. <laughs> She was an excellent caddy, I have to say. <laughs> Gailey, uh, the team, they were the underdogs for the final against Sweden. But so the foursomes were halved and then the singles, that's what, where England really came strong. What tipped the balance in England's favour? And, you know, uh, it's been alluded to already about the camaraderie among this group of women playing together as a team for the first time. But just talk me through some of those emotions and what tipped it for the singles? I think definitely um, from the beginning of the week, we all had the belief that we could win and we was just all taking it set by set in the foursomes and then going on to the singles and we didn't really treat the final against Sweden very differently um, and I just think we all realised what we were actually playing for and that was a gold medal and I just think that with our team spirit all just came together and, and got us the win. Now, I have been amazingly privileged in my life and I managed to watch the Solheim at Glen Eagles, which was a fantastic win, obviously, for Europe. And lucky enough to be involved in some of the celebrations later that evening. And they were raucous, to say the least. And I just want to know, what were your celebrations like? You'd have this tough week at Royal County Down, but then you'd won it, right? You'd won it, you'd got the gold medal. You get back to the hotel, there must have been a room, there must have been music, there must have been dancing now that you're European champions. Annabelle, you can take this one. <laughs> <laughs> I think for me, it was um, the biggest part of it was actually as soon as we ran, uh, won, we all ran down the fairways. I think for me that was like, even Jenny was like next to us, like running down the fairways to like hug everyone. Cause we were obviously in separate holes winning. And then I just remember like everybody like running together and like me and Jenny were there like pulling the golf bag with Kaylee. Like, oh my God, we need to like, like for me, that was a moment I remember the most. And then like in the evening, I just remember like, oh yeah, we're having all the desserts cause we're like winners. And I think it was just nice being together, to be honest, because we're all so close. So I think like every bit of the whole day it was just memorable. Very diplomatic answer. Kaylee. why didn't you want to answer first? No, I, I just remember running as well. I'm not a runner and I just remember being very out of breath. So. Do you know what? It was fantastic and it's such a great achievement. And, you know, you represented the country and just did us proud. So thank you. And, you know, you're joining us from the United States at this moment. So you've taken time out of your day because you know that what you did was brilliant and to recognise you, we're all so proud. So congratulations to you both and of course, to the whole team, to the whole squad. We're gonna take a quick break now in between the awards to take a look at how some of you are celebrating tonight. So I'm gonna take a look at you and look at some of the tweets you've sent through. Um, Enfield Golf Juniors, today's the day. Ah, oh, so I've been looking forward to this evening. Um, thank you very much for tweeting. It's been great to see you so involved. Um, and obviously, as we've said, it is live streamed on our YouTube channel. Um, and we can see so many people enjoying themselves around the country as well from various golf clubs. And they're all around. Maybe we'll just turn up the volume a bit and just hear you all cheer. Can I just understand that you're all still there? Can I hear you? Don't forget to unmute yourselves. 
Oh, you're all looking brilliant. You're all looking brilliant. It's lovely to hear. It's lovely to see you all as well. And you've all made such an effort. It's brilliant. It's getting into the spirit of this. And I know even though this is virtual, one of the things we were just loving about this is that golf clubs can get people together where often you only get two or three places, I suppose, at an evening event. Now we're just seeing clubs come together and doing what they do best as a community. Now, another new award for our virtual event is the Women and Girls Trailblazer Award. Now this aims to recognize those who have helped to tackle underrepresentation by providing opportunities for women and girls to take up the game or continue to enjoy the sport. For very worthy finalists, Hannah Crump from Stonebridge Golf Club, who you'll remember was also listed as a finalist in the diversity and inclusion category, has used her infectious enthusiasm to help more than a thousand women take up golf. In particular, mums of children involved in junior lessons have been encouraged to make golf a family experience. Alice Davis from Parkstone Golf Club established a thriving girls' academy at Parkstone Golf Club and created a pink ladies' pathway to membership for women who not only enjoy playing the game, but also the social aspect of the sport. More than 30 women attend these weekly sessions. Now, Love.Golf has provided fun and lively group coaching ex experiences for new and existing women golfers from diverse backgrounds in the community. And Stacey McNicholas from Elsham Golf Club has helped transform girls golf in Lincolnshire and used her vision to create the Lincolnshire Girls Golf Squad. Through this group, junior girls compete, they enjoy coaching sessions and skills development. In a year, the group has grown from 27 to 73 participants. Now, to announce the winner of this award, there's a special guest. Singer-songwriter and presenter Fleur East, who's become a keen golfer herself over the last 18 months. Take it away, Fleur. I am so excited to be presenting this very important award. As a newcomer to golf myself, over the last couple of years, it's great to see all the hard work that is being done to encourage women and girls to get out there and smash it on the course. And long may it continue. Now this year's finalists were all amazing, but our winner was truly outstanding. This champion has introduced over a thousand women to the game of golf in her capacity as an awesome PGA coach. More than that, she makes golf fun for beginner girls and fuels their passion. As if that wasn't enough, she's worked with the local LGBTQ plus community and the Muslim Golf Association to drive diversity in the game. What a star. The winner is Hannah Crump from Stonebridge Golf Club. Congratulations, Hannah. You're amazing. Mwah. Fleur, thank you so much. Now, what you all in, at home and in your clubs wouldn't have seen is Hannah. Yeah, you unmute that, Hannah. You unmute away. Um, <laughs> is Hannah, who was standing at the back of the room. With friends, family. Is that family around you, Hannah? Yeah, Naga. So we're on holiday with Dad in Cornwall. Beautiful. So we were in a in a yeah, we're in a lovely little place called St. Moore's in Cornwall. So all the family were together in a little uh, little cottage and my work colleagues were actually they were holidaying over in Bude in Cornwall, so they've come down for the uh, for the evening. So yeah, proper party vibe. Excellent. You've got the clubs. Adam. You got your clubs? Well, yeah, we did. I took my little nephew, we went to a little golf course down the road yesterday. So oh, it was uh, gorgeous, absolutely perfect. What no one saw was Hannah was at the back of the room kind of just listening and just wondering is it me is it me and then and she was just standing there and then all of a sudden when they realized the lady in the red with the polka dots kind of got her phone and started filming Hannah as hello lady in red and filming Hannah as she came out to the camera Hannah look congratulations as part of this award win we're arranging here's a little treat you're going to meet Fleur out on the course um, no, and you're going to tell us a little bit more about the incredible work you do before then and perhaps give her a few tips at the same time about her game. So you're going to get to meet her. You're going to get to play a bit as well. Um, you have been nominated in two awards. OK, two awards. So that's a, an impressive achievement as it is. And you've won one. Um, we heard earlier about you helping more than a thousand women take up golf. How do you do it? I think for me, obviously being um, being a female PGA coach, I know there's not a lot of me, so it kind of naturally just drives a massive passion to grow this game for females, make it fun. Absolutely, I think that is my kind of for me that is everything. And 
yeah, just love doing it. So for me, I just want to keep going, keep growing and just get the female golf world um, as strong, as strong as we can. Hannah, I'm going to get you to dip a little bit because you're cutting the top of your head off. And I think it, all of your head is lovely. There you go. There you go. OK, there we go. Look, you're good at camera work as well. Honestly, it could do with you. Some of someone like you in certain places. I won't mention where. Um, now, um, for any woman who kind of thinks about it, takes a look at golf and just goes, look, it's not for me. What would you say? Um, do you know, I always find that, I think, but once they have a go, I think on the outside, golf is, golf is still really kind of massively unattractive to women. Um, and I find that, I think I, when I do a taster session or I welcome women to come along, have a free go, their faces as they arrive, they're like so scared. And I love it because I feel like they're, they're coming into an environment that, all right, the minute they leave, they'll feel the opposite. Um, so I, I know it. I know driving, driving down that driveway or coming into a golf club, seeing all the restrictions, it's like, oh, but the minute they do it, they love it. And, and that's what it's all about. I just, you know, for me last year, I did a Christmas party and that to me was just absolutely everything. Having women that had never met six, seven months ago. Now they're going out having sort of nine holes, you know, and, and having real fun with it. So that's, that's what it's all about for me. It's just giving it a go. You never know until you try. I think I can promise, I'm sure you'll agree with me, Hannah, that once you've tried it, you strut. You're as nervous as you are when you come in, yeah. but you strut absolutely. off a golf course, don't that's you? It. Good or bad, you want, a, you want another go. Absolutely. Hannah, congratulations. Enjoy Cornwall um, with the family, and I'm glad you've got the clubs. Hope you get good weather as well. I think the weather's good for the next yeah, few absolutely. days. Absolutely. Yeah, I'm feeling a bit, feeling a bit uh, hot under the uh, cheeks today, so yeah. all good. I'm sure a couple of glasses of fizz will help that even more. Yeah, I was going to say, I don't know, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Enjoy, Thanks, Hannah. Thank you. Good luck. Well done. If you do want to hear more about more women, similar to Hannah, with a deep, deep love of the game and a passion to inspire others to pick up a club or perhaps simply find a career in the golf industry, look out for England Golf's. I'm going to get you to cut that to Hannah quick. Oh, we just missed her. She was jumping up and down with her family, hugging up and down. It was fabulous. England Golf's Women and Girls in Golf Week is taking place between the 1st to the 7th of August. There are so many amazing stories from trailblazing females in England. Uh, we can't cram them into a day. I tell you, we need a whole week, maybe even a whole year, but it's fantastic that it's going on. Now, next up is Tournament Venue of the Year. This award is for venues that hosted official England golf tournaments in 2022. Our four finalists are Farnham Golf Club for the England Under 18s Championships, which excelled in the inaugural England Under 18 Mixed Championship with music on the range, a course prepared to perfection. The event attracted BBC South coverage and significant local sponsorship with profits reinvested in the club's junior section. Headingley Golf Club for the England Amateur Championships, English Amateur Championships. It had an army of more than 100 club volunteers to make the club a welcoming co-host for the English Amateur Championships. An extra 20 green staff were kitted out as tournament team, thanks to local sponsorship. Filled with confidence, the club now markets itself as a championship venue and is beginning to reap the, re the rewards. Then there's Moulton and Norton Golf Club for the English Girls Open Amateur Stroke Play Championships. It had more than 60 volunteers from the club on hand, outdoor catering facilities, gazebos constructed on site, and extra staff recruited to maintain the course, which all made the tournament a huge success. And Whittlebury Park Golf Club for the English Open for golfers with a disability. It had an inclusive thinking attitude to help it stage a successful English Open for golfers with a disability. The 27-hole venue was carefully configured with the competitors and in mind and accessibility in and around the venue. That was key to ensuring a safe and enjoyable event. Now, judges said the winner considered all aspects of the customer's journey and mobilised and motivated their membership to volunteer and support the event. Innovation was clearly shown by securing sponsorship and investing the surplus in the junior section and club practice facilities. The winner is Farnham Golf Club for hosting, <laughs> leap up, for hosting the England Under-18 Championships. Congratulations to you. Who is that who's leapt to the screen to unmute and say hello? Hello, who's that? Hi. Hi. My name is Ben Beasley. I'm the general manager here. Oh, congratulations. And you've got some of the members there as well. Um, uh, it was a landmark event, wasn't it? It was the first ever mixed gender championship. Um, you were at the head of it hosting it. 
what did it mean to you and the members? It, it, meant, it meant an awful lot to us. Um, we're absolutely ecstatic here. There's a, a fabulous vibe here in the clubhouse. Uh, it meant a lot. It was our first ever England Golf Championship here at Farnham Golf Club, and we wanted to pull out all the stops uh, to put on a fabulous show and be excellent hosts. And, you know, it, what's interesting is the sponsorship um, profits that came through, that was reinvested. And it, it's so easy to kind of think, oh, this needs doing, that needs doing. But you, pl you plunge that straight back into the junior section. Um, what has, you know, emanated from that? What have you been able to do with this money to encourage more juniors? Well, um, our junior section here um, is, is not for profit. It's one thing that we're very proud of here is that everything that we uh, take from, from junior income through subscriptions, it all gets plunged back into uh, coaching and prizes and trophies and events and whatever we can do for, to grow the game with juniors, we do that. We've got a, a wonderful section, a wonderful junior organiser, some fabulous young, young golfers and a brilliant young academy as well. So um, all, all of that, it contributes to all of that for us. And just tell me, you know, there must be a pride knowing that you've hosted something like this, that you're being recognised. Even, that, you know, before you knew you'd won, that, that you've been nominated. I mean, how does that reflect ultimately in the membership in everyday, you know, golfing days? Well, um, you can tell from the crowd that we've got here, um, we, we had tremendous support from the membership here. I'm so, so very grateful to all the members who, who supported the occasion. We had over 90 uh, members volunteer and um, I, I think it showed in the welcome uh, throughout the week uh, that we hosted uh, how much it meant to uh, us to both both have the event here but also to uh, to win now is just outstanding. It's absolutely brilliant. Go grab a drink, go cheer, go celebrate and uh, yeah a big round of applause. Congratulations. To you. Brilliant. Now, the penultimate award this evening is for Golf Club of the Year. Our finalists, Bode Park Hotel and Golf Club. Now, that offered free coaching to all juniors and sparked growth in membership from 187 to 350 in two years. A wind turbine provides energy and solar panels uh, to light up the ranges. The club is trying to become carbon negative by 2026. Clitheroe Golf Club opened a performance golf academy in 2021 and a new floodlit range. Adoption of the Women in Golf Charter saw 32 new, new women members join in 2021. A new orange course caters for beginners, while eco-bunkering, the addition of hedgehog shelters and bug hotels promoted environmental issues. Hazel Golf, Club, Grove, Hazel Grove Golf Club became the 400th signatory in England to the Women in Golf Charter. Now, the club partnered with the Stroke Association to run sessions and help local individuals discover golf as part of their rehab. All Saturday competitions are open to both men and women. A revised governance structure with a management board in place has set the club up for the future. Waybrook Park Golf Club completed a 27-hole complex, expanding playing opportunities for members and visitors alike. Memberships grown by 34% in a year. On the UK front, a Skylark Nest protection zone was introduced. A club beehive now produces the club's own branded honey, with profits from the sale passed to charity. Now, to announce the winner, I'm delighted to say I'm joined by Jeremy Tomlinson. You'll know Jeremy, he's the Chief Executive of England Golf. But before Jeremy comes to the stage, we have the England Golf Course Planner video to show you, outlining the strategy that England Golf is working from to be in the best position to grow the game we love.
Jeremy, it's great to be here this evening. I watch a video like that and it makes me want to go out and play. What time is it now? Uh, it's about half past seven. There's still light. You could get a couple we, of holes in. We could. We, yeah, we, could, could. Get, yeah, we yeah. could get a couple of holes in. Now, look, um, we've both been indulged with a glass of fizz. Ooh. Oh, <laughs> <I'll throw it laughs> Jeremy didn't want his. <laughs> cheers to you cheers, and for this. And cheers to all of you. Cheers, I mean, we're delighted. And wouldn't you say the nominees, the winners, those who've been shortlisted, the, the work the judges have put into this, uh, just make this industry look and seem and show how fantastic it is at this moment in time. Without a shadow of a doubt. To see those smiles, that was the, uh, that's the bit for me. Yeah. That's what make makes this so, so worthwhile. It really is. And, you know, why is it so important, I think? I just want to ask you a couple of questions, so put that down. Um, of course. <laughs> Sorry. Um, why is it so important that nights like this happen, you know, where we, where we celebrate, where we, where we, we recognise, from England golf's perspective? Well, I think... Firstly, it was the smiles. I, I really think that, that that for me just, we, we can't get away from the fact that this is a game that we love. So to see those smiles for me just, just, just sums it up. And, um, but secondly, um, it's about people. It really is. Our game is nothing without the people that, uh, that, that volunteer in some way, shape or form, look after junior sections, go on committees, um, help in any way, shape or form, and, and, and then not only them, but the people who are also paid at our clubs and our counties who go above and beyond. And I think what we've seen tonight is so many incredible people yeah. that we can look at and celebrate and thank. Um, so for me, that, that, that will be the second thing. And the third thing is, is our game gets a bit of a bad rap sometimes. Yep. And um, I think from a messaging perspective, what a night like tonight enables us to do is to not only bring those smiles, bring those wonderful people, but also show that golf's relevant. And I think that's a really important thing, that our sport is a wonderful sport. We love it. It's wonderful to have you here with your passion and advocacy for the game. But you know what? It is relevant in today. Well, you can see from the social issues yeah. that are addressed from some, some, from some of our winners and the diversity, you know, that recognition that everyone should be included. There should be no barriers and Without golf can help break, break, break those down. You know, golf, fantastic place right now, really. <laughs> Surprisingly, yeah. after the pandemic, when, you know... It's been in England, at various parts of the country at various times, but we couldn't play over the last two years. So 2021 figures, I think, showing club membership up by, what, 90,000 from the previous year. iGolf, there's that subscription platform for non-members of golf clubs, taking off in a big way, offering something, you know, fresh to a new community um, of golfers sure. at a different stage Absolutely. in their golfing journey. Um, is, uh, is golf at the moment at a place where it can be said it is healthy in England? Without a shadow of a doubt, there's no two ways about it. And um, it, it's an interesting word that you used because none of us would have ever wished for a, a global pandemic. Yeah. Um, but, and, and I promise you, I sit in some meetings with other sports that are having a really tough time coming out of the pandemic for the, and the lockdown for the last two years. But that's not the case with golf. Um, whether it be through um, people waking up who've, who'd given up the game and coming back to the game or people wanting to start it up. I mean, we start with, a, if, we, if we look at that number, the 90,000 mm. new members. If you then bring that back, because there's a golfer cycle um, that starts with leisure and recreation, and it's that one where people go, you know what, I'm going to give it a go. Or it might be grandkids going out with their grandparents or boyfriend, girlfriend, or whatever it might be. But people go, you know what, I'm going to give it a try and uh, then they get the bug, and there's a whole load of people there, then they move on a little bit, a whole load get the bug, and, uh, and they go, you know what, I could take this to the golf course, and I could try it, and I could you know, and hit some more balls at the range. And each section, because that then transfers to those 90,000 members, and each section um, ha has had uh, an inflation of numbers. It's been wonderful from a participation perspective to see people really coming to the game and seeing that it's really good fun. How's your game, better or worse? Um, but it's worse because there's uh, the workload at the moment is oh, a bit more. Than look, <laughs> I forgot to bring my violin. If my boss is watching. <laughs> <laughs> well, actually, look, it's not about you. It's not about me. Absolutely, it's about it's this not. great no. game and this exactly. industry as yeah. well. Um, things are looking great. They're in good shape yeah. for the country at the moment. Um, there is this very important matter of announcing the winner of the club of the year, and that comes down to you. Without a shadow of a doubt. Thank you. Thank you again, Nigel. Okay. We are truly blessed in this country to be served by so many fantastic golf clubs who not only provide pristine venues for our great game to be played, but also act as hubs for the local community. Golf clubs are the beating heart of so many towns all over England, 
and the role they play in bringing people together has never been so important or so impressive as during these last two pandemic affected years. From the original nominations, our judges whittled down this, whittled down to a short list of four. An enormous credit is due to all four clubs who made the shortlist and to those others who up and down the country just missed out because so many have done such a great job. They have all provided outstanding value and service to their existing members and returning guests and taken this further with innovative uh, thinking and modern ideas to embrace new golfers and plan for future growth. In another keenly contested category, as Naga said, you know, the judges fought over this one. The, the judges have decided that tonight's winning club deserved the plaudits for the way in which it has embraced the ideas of openness, inclusivity, excellence, and in service and putting golfers first. It is my great pleasure to announce that the winner is Hazel Grove Golf Club. Well done. Unmuted and now you can hear that raucous applause. <laughs> Thank you so much. Again, okay, hello. Who have we got? In front of you? Hello. Hello. Who's in front of the camera? When, it, when he's finished his hugging. Hello. Who's that? What's your name? My name's James Rowlands. I'm the PJ Professional and Club Manager at Hazel Grove Golf Club. Now, James. And to my left, Michael Jones, the chairman. Congratulations to you both, and obviously to all of, all of you um, there who have gathered as well. I can see there's absolute delight. Oh, I love a good hug. Um, 2021. <laughs> Um, 2021, um, tough year for clubs all around the country and you've come out the other side of this and you've won an award. Tell us what it means to you. Oh, it's absolutely amazing. Sorry, we're just, we're just a bit overwhelmed. Um, we, we've put um, so much work in over the last sort of two or three years to, to, to build a club. We've restructured the management board. We've introduced uh, equality and inclusivity in competitions. Um, we've worked with quite a few community groups, uh, including the Stroke Association. We've uh, driven hard to get the safe golf. We've got the Women in Golf Charter. Um, I, I can go on. Do, we do what, what we can, really. Most, most importantly, this is just recognition for the hard, hard work that our employees and our fantastic volunteers <laughs> put into this club over the last two years to just take us forward. Um, we're in a really exciting place at the moment and long may it continue. Um, golf is a great sport and this is a great golf club and I'm proud to be a member of it uh, with these people. So, uh, well done everyone. Okay, as part of the year, I'm going to give you 15 seconds to say why anyone should make the effort to nip down to Hazel Grove, Grove Golf Club and try to have a round, because I think you're going to be in um, a lot of demand now. You're very, well you're very welcome, Naga. You're, you're on our doorstep. Great to see you come play down to the Grove. Oh, I think Everyone will be um, looking you up now, popping you into a search engine just to find out exactly more about you. Listen, congratulations. Congratulations to all those who've been nominated. You're all doing so much work and you've dealt with the pandemic and we've all had times that we, we didn't know if we'd come out of it and so many of you just kept on working, kept on believing and kept on um, plowing investment and passion into places you love and Hazel Grove and all the other clubs as well. It shows, and your members, new members, players are grateful. So enjoy your evening. Congratulations. Fabulous blue jumpers, by the way. I'm enjoying the colour. <laughs> Take care. Thank you. Last award of the night honours a very special individual who's put in many years of sterling service in support of the game of golf. This person 
typifies all that is good about the club and amateur game in England. Over the course of 45 years, this man has made a telling and lasting contribution to the game of golf in his beloved county of Somerset. From developing Wells Golf Club from a nine to an 18 hole venue, and then helping to found Long Sutton Golf Club, our winner tonight has touched the lives of thousands of golfers in such a positive manner. If you want something done, something improved, something answered, something checked, then this is your go-to guy in Somerset. Quite simply, this is a man who's made a difference and continues to make a difference. At a recent golf day at Long Sutton, we surprised tonight's winner, described by all who know him as a legend and recognised him for an outstanding contribution to the game. The winner of tonight's Lifetime Service Award is Tommy Tulk. A lot of what is here now, Tommy's been part of. And I think that is one of his huge contributions to golf in Somerset. Puts everybody else before himself. He wants everybody to be involved. He doesn't like to see people get left out. He's done a lot of charity work. Whatever he's asked to do, Tom will be there. A big man with a big heart. He really is um, one in a million. <laughs> That's already been done. He's Mr. Long Sutton, which is where we are today. You know, he's helped build it. He's been president. He's currently the captain. A fantastic supporter of junior golf has helped families that have struggled to get kids to venues. Tommy has always given his time developing golf for those who play for Somerset. And the coaching programs that are now being put in place are significant. I think he's put his, his heart and soul into this club. In excess of a quarter of a million pounds they raised for St. Margaret's Hospice. And a lot of the support that the charity days have is because people know him and are proud to support him. But we made a nomination for the England Golf Awards and the result won't go national until April the 20th. But I know the result. He sat there. Tommy has been awarded the Lifetime Service Award to golf for all he has given. Tom, if I can ask you to come forward. Well done, mate. I can't be more pleased than to hand it over to you. Well done. Thank you to you all for the support you've shown me over the years. Well Thank you very Tom. much. Well done, Tom. I'm honoured to take it on behalf of the county, the club that I'm a member of, and all the people that supported me in golf over the last 40 years. I've had a bit of a shock but a pleasant surprise. I think you saw it was a little bit emotional, but you're bound to be, aren't you? Um, I've got my family and friends here and uh, it means so much to me. I can only imagine how much it means to Tommy, but it also means a hell of a lot to the people whose lives he has changed and helped. Tommy, congratulations. 45 years service to golf. Fabulous. Right, now, um, <laughs> hey, yeah, let those poppers go. Um, Tommy, how are you doing? Um, when you hear yourself described as a legend, as I introduced you, by those colleagues, the words of your colleagues who've worked with you over the last few decades, how does that make you feel? Um, proud, but also humble, because... Uh, Without the people around me in golf, I couldn't have done what I've done. So um, it's about a team effort. When you sail on a ship, it's about all the crew. And everyone in Somerset and Long Sutton has been my crew through the 45 years I've been involved with golf. Yeah, it's a fabulous way to talk about your colleagues and friends. Um, I, I've got a, a, a kind of difficult question, a kind of unfair question, but I'm going to ask it anyway because that's what I do. Um, if you could pick a highlight from your time, so you spent it at Wells and Long Sutton Golf Club, you were involved with Somerset County, where, where, where was the highlight for you? Seeing a golf club built in my village, Long Sutton, and seeing it come back from the floods in 2014 to where it is today. Without a doubt. 
Well, and, you know, you've done four decades of voluntary service. You're going to be retired. You're going to be entitled to retire now. You can go to the 19th hole. But I get the feeling that it's not going to be... <laughs> Sorry, I missed that. I get the feeling, even though you're entitled to retirement, it's not going to be a full retirement. No, no. If you stop, you stop, don't you? I, I couldn't stop. I'll keep going. What's <coughs> <laughs> you want a drink? I've got one. <laughs> All right. I'm toasting you, by the way. Tell me about the people behind you. Tell me about what they mean to you and how they support you. Well, it's a fabulous community, golf, and uh, the club I'm a member of, it's, it's unique in Somerset. The atmosphere is unique. Tonight is club night. There are about 50 or 60 of them have been playing. They come in for food. They've sat and waited through the hour and a half before this came on and to support me, and that's what club life's about, and they are fantastic members of this club. Absolutely. Um, I, this, so this isn't a question for you, Tommy. This is a question for those behind you. Was it worth the wait? Yeah! Congratulations, Tommy. Lovely to see you smiling. Lovely to see you recognised and lovely to see all the support you're getting as well. Congratulations. Enjoy the rest of your evening. Thank you very much. That's it. That brings an end to tonight's England Golf Awards 2022. A virtual experience. One I hoped you all enjoyed. I really did. It just felt like it's felt like a night of celebration. Celebration of our game. Celebration of all you brilliant people who make us make this happen and make us enjoy it. Thanks to our headline sponsor, Adidas Golf, to the category sponsors, the Golf Foundation, Your Golf Travel, and our trophy sponsor, Burridges. The stars of the show, they're always the nominees and the winners. One thing we can all be sure of is that with people like we've seen tonight acting as guardians of this fabulous game, English golf and amateur golf, it is in good shape. And to all our winners and our nominees, thank you. Thank you for providing the inspiration that gives all golfers, me included, an amazing pride in our sport. And to everyone else who's watching online to cheer on their favourites and celebrate the game of golf in England, thank you for your company and your camaraderie. Enjoy golf, who knows? Maybe you'll be joining us for the next edition of the England Golf Awards. One last time, let's take a look at you. A big wave from me and, of course, all of our finalists. Bye-bye. Have a fabulous evening. It's been so brilliant seeing you all. We're going to leave you with a video of our 2021 year in review. And now, until the next time, happy golfing. Good night. I love it. I got into it. It, it harnessed my competitive nature. I cannot recommend it highly enough. The sound of a club hitting the ball is right up there. And now I absolutely love it. Welcome back to the channel and welcome back to a video, you absolute golf life a legend. Welcome back to Farnham Golf Club and this is now the final showdown.
Hi, and I'm from the Young Ambassadors here at the England Amateur Championships. So excited to be here and I'm going to be taking over the England Golf Page to take from my perspective what I'm seeing out here on this beautiful course today.